All right, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we need to update you guys again on that tropical cyclone offshore of the East Coast because percentages have really skyrocketed. Now, before I get into it, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather-related content and also be sure to destroy the like button and leave a comment down below because those two things help me grow my channel so much and get the word out to people. For today's comment of the day, I want to know, do you think this storm is going to get stronger on the eastern side of Florida or once it enters into the Gulf? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Of course, that's assuming that it does enter into the Gulf, but that is looking overwhelmingly more likely by the day. Let's take a look at the two-day graphical tropical weather outlook, and this is where things get crazy. We went from a 20% chance, I think it was a 20% chance, it should have been, to a 50% chance in the two-day graphical tropical weather outlook, just from yesterday morning to this morning. So things have obviously escalated quickly. On the five-day outlook, there's not much of a change, still a 50% chance of development. I told you guys... I was expecting a big jump in this probability, and it certainly has come. Uh, it's skyrocketed to a code orange or a medium risk at this point. Very interesting, and we can basically say that there's a good chance we're going to see this one develop over the next two to five days. Super interesting. It's been really fun tracking this one with you guys, uh, and I'm happy that we were able to get a very early jump on this one. Hopefully, everybody else was able to get the information uh, early enough. Now... Here is some satellite imagery, and as you can see, it is looking like a healthy storm there. It is pretty far south. It's almost touching the Bahamas. As a matter of fact, some of those outer bands are actually over the Bahamas a little bit. Uh, but this one is expected to curve back westward and possibly hit the east coast of Florida within 24 hours. Now, that was at about 2 a.m. or so. Let's take a look at about 5 or 6 a.m., maybe more like 6 a.m. here. And as you can see, it's pushed even further to the southeast, but those clouds are getting taller in there and uh, it's getting a little closer to development. Very interesting stuff there. Now let's take a look at the probability of tropical depression here from our European model. And as you can see, we're at a 50 to 60% chance there, and you can see this is day zero through three, so you can see that it actually does expect it to cross over Florida, because a lot of that risk goes over there into the Gulf. Very interesting as well. Days three through six, we only have a 10 to 20% chance that it's over Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Florida, and Georgia there. So that's where that storm is expected to be located, according to the European model. Here's the probability of tropical storm. And as you can see, they still have a zero to 10% chance of tropical storm. So they do expect it to become a tropical depression, more than likely 50 to 60% chance. But they do not expect it to upgrade to a tropical storm. So a very specific tropical depression is what is expected according to this European probability model. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move on because we finally have spaghetti model guidance to look at. So we're going to look at that in just a moment and then we're going to move on and take a look at the cyclonic vorticity. Now here is our GFS ensemble model spaghetti model guidance and as you can see it expects this one to head generally southwest. This is as of last night. Uh, I think it had a lot it headed a lot further southeast than what it originally anticipated. So I, I'm curious to see how this one changes once we get the 12Z update, or maybe even the 6Z update. I, I think this model might only update every 12 hours, though. Now, this one is expected to go to the southern portion of Florida, as you can see, according to this model. And I think this would be an especially bad scenario, because if it enters into the Gulf very far south like that, it's going to have more time over those Gulf waters, which happen to be very, very warm, which also happens to really lead to very good development for tropical systems. So this one would probably develop quite nicely if it entered into the Southern Gulf like that. Now let's take a look at what the Canadian ensemble model has to say. Keep in mind this was as of last night. And this one has it just curving up the East Coast, kind of skirting along South Carolina and North Carolina and then heading out to sea. Very interesting scenario there. Uh, but I think if we get an update from this one, it's going to have a much more southern route to it, if you will, and head more towards the Gulf, most likely, uh, according to this model. Now, here is all the individual models, and as you can see, there is still some to take it up to the north. That's just becoming the kind of minority here at this point. We do see some hitting Georgia, South Carolina, even North Carolina, and southeastern Virginia as well. Uh, we even see one going out to sea as well, uh, but we see that there's probably about I would say at least 25% more models there that take it into the Gulf over Florida. 
Uh, they think it'll go kind of right over the middle of the state and head out kind of just offshore of Tampa Bay and then not spend too much time over the Gulf and then hit Louisiana or Mississippi or Alabama or even the panhandle of Florida uh, very quickly. And that's kind of the best case scenario because that will keep the storm much weaker if we see that happen. So even though you, you folks over there might be thinking that's bad news, that's much better news because, let's see, maybe maybe 48 hours over water, maybe. Uh, if it enters into the southern Gulf, if we see a southern or a slower trend and it heads kind of offshore um, in southern Florida and stays over the Gulf an extra day, we could see this one develop very, very intense uh, to a very large storm. And that would not be good news, obviously. So I think this is going to be the better scenario is a quick hit of Florida and then a quick hit in the Gulf uh, states because it's pretty much inevitable that it will hit. So we want it to at least be weaker if it's going to hit. There's not really much chance that it doesn't hit the United States at this point. I see two models total that uh, actually, sorry, one, because the one there that heads into the middle of the Gulf, it still goes over Florida. So the U.S. is is looking to get impacted by this storm regardless. So we might as well have a weaker storm while we're at it. What we're going to do in a moment is we're going to move on and take a look at the model intensity guidance to see how intense this one could get. And then we're going to take a look at the vorticity on the models in just a moment. All right, now here is our model intensity guidance. And as you can see, there's quite a few that keep this right underneath tropical storm status. This one, according to these models, is very close to becoming a tropical depression. Wouldn't even be surprised if this morning we get an update that says this one is a tropical depression if not throughout the day today. Uh, there is, according to these models, I would say there's about a 50% chance that this one does hit tropical storm status because about 50% of these models do take it up towards tropical storm status. We see one, two, three, four, five, and even six because one takes it very shortly to tropical storm status. And I would say uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven show it not becoming a tropical storm. So it's very close to 50-50 here. Uh, and even three of those take it to Category 1 status in the very long range. I'm sure those ones keep it over water a lot. That's got to be what that is. So we will have to wait and see, but I can't wait to update this one for you guys because there's a lot more information that's going to come out, I'm sure. Here is our vorticity, cyclonic vorticity, and this shows us very large-scale rotation. I've been enjoying using this tool lately a lot for you guys. I feel like it really gets the point across, and we can tell how intense a storm is very well from this type of a product. Uh, we see that this is as of last night at about 8 p.m. And it had some nice spin to it, but as of pretty much like 11 a.m. this morning, so probably by the time you're watching this video, if not a little after, uh, we see some very nice rotation here according to our European model. Uh, but this one hits northern Florida according to the European model, and I think that's going to be the best case scenario around Jacksonville there, or maybe south of Jacksonville. And then it skirts underneath the panhandle very quickly. This is as of 6 a.m. on Monday. And basically, it's never able to get its act together over the Gulf because it's getting so much land interaction. So I think this is the best case scenario for everybody involved, and I really think this would lead to the, le the least amount of impacts. Now, here's our GFS model on the cyclonic vorticity, and this is as of 6 a.m. this morning, or sorry, tomorrow morning, Sunday, uh, July 25th. And as you can see, not much is going on, but it does have it hitting Florida. It's one of those green areas there, so this one has much weaker rotation as it hits Florida. But as you can see, it moves offshore of Tampa Bay, so much further south than the European model has, and it instantly is getting some red areas, indicating more of that large-scale rotation. And look at this. By the time we're reaching 2 p.m. on Tuesday, it's still over the Gulf, eating up those warm waters, and it's becoming a much stronger storm as it's reaching Louisiana. So that is the worst-case scenario, like I said before, staying over the Gulf a lot longer, heading offshore of Florida further south, which therefore means uh, actually staying in the Gulf longer and then hitting the Gulf states as a much stronger storm than as if it was to head off of northern Florida and move a lot quicker and have that land interaction holding it back. Anyway, for today's confidence tab, we've upgraded from a four to a five. Finally, I'm feeling more and more confident in this storm. I think we know what this is. It's a weaker tropical system that does have some potential to get a little bit stronger if it stays over the Gulf longer. But if it moves quicker, it should stay a weaker storm, and that's basically our two options at this point. There is that slim possibility, though, that it heads north up the east coast, but that is becoming less and less likely by the day. So a five out of six. For today's comment of the day, I asked you guys just that. Do you think it'll head up the east coast, or do you think it'll head into the gulf? And James Marr said, I believe it will head back into the gulf, and he was absolutely correct there. Uh, I think that is the case by this point. For today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, John Ben Benick, James Wade, Dovey Nagel, 
Larry LePan, and Donna Carnes, alongside our Diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalasa, Cat Bite, Charles Stinnett, Cindy Klein, Mark J, Luke Flago, Gary, Sean Kulisi, Dwight Phelan, and Steven Cronenthal. If you would like to be a part of this patron on screen today, you can do so by joining our very exciting Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. I would also like to thank our channel members, Hair Firms 1 and Cat Bite as well. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to destroy the like button and leave a comment down below like I said before because those two things help the channel out so much. And also be sure to subscribe if you like weather related content. I will see you guys in the next video.